I wish to recognize the presence of uh, the PF Whip, Chief Whip, and also the Deputy Whip, and all honorable members of Parliament uh, the present. Uh, countrymen and women, we are here today, uh, this afternoon, as members of Parliament uh, from the Patriotic Front Party, uh, protesting against the manner in which members of parliament are being treated by the police. The matter was raised on the floor and uh, Madam Speaker gave an opportunity to the Minister of Home Affairs to clarify uh, on the manner in which members of parliament are being arrested, harassed, abducted, name it. We have seen a trend by the police in the recent past to abduct members of parliament, incarcerate them, detain them in police cells, deny to give them bond, even when they can be given bond as promised by President Daka in the Hichilema. These members of parliament, countrymen and women, are elected officials. They are representatives of the people. They are lawmakers. And to confer that status on them, some of the privileges that they enjoy are things like diplomatic passports. Not necessarily that those passports are supposed to be utilized locally, as alleged by the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs. But it confirms that um, the government system recognizes the importance of these Honorable Members. These Honorable Members are highly respected whenever they travel out of the country because of the role that they play in the governance system. But locally, they're being treated like criminals. I want to make one point very clear. We are not here to proclaim or claim that members of parliament are immune from arrests. That is not our position. Our position is that they still remain amenable to the law, but the manner of arrest must be orderly must be in such a way that uh, you know they are arresting somebody who is respected by society what is wrong with giving a member a call out or indeed bringing a call out to parliament so that the member can present himself or herself before the police we have said this time and again that this country is sliding slowly sliding into a police state where the police are the law unto themselves. The police are given instructions straight from State House on how to harass these honorable members of parliament. And we know the scheme. You don't have to be a rocket scientist uh, you know, to, to see what is going on. The president of this republic, President Daka in the Hichilema, intends to instill fear in these members of parliament because attempts have been made to try and get them on the UPND side. These honorable members that you are seeing here, countrymen and women, are honorable members. These are citizens that, that have stood by you, the voters, and the vote to continue providing checks and balances in this, uh, uh, in this country. So when they've been unable to attract the attention of these honorable members, they've resorted to intimidation and persecution. So today's protest, the walking out of parliament, was to send a message, firstly to the Minister of Home Affairs, that we will not stand idle and allow, allow our members to be harassed in the manner that um, the police have continued to do. This is also a warning to the Inspector General of Police. Act within the law. Act with respect. The people that you are seeing here are members of parliament, elected members of parliament. Each one of these have got over 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people that voted for them. They therefore cannot be treated in the manner that you, Inspector General of Police, have continued to act. There were recent reports that uh, a, you know, police intend to train some of their staff. Our recommendation as members of parliament is that we start with the top command, because so far, the police have been very disappointing in the manner that they've handled uh, the police matters. 
we want to uh, uh, appeal to you, uh, Inspector General of Police, ensure that your top command are fully trained to even understand uh, the ways in which members of parliament or elected members of parliament uh, should be treated. We're not asking for anything out of this world. Nothing unusual is the respect of members of parliament. These are lawmakers. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we thought this was very, very important because uh, uh, just a few days ago we had Honorable Robert Kalimi he arrested and detained. Was it for two, two nights? Uh, the other one was Honorable Christopher Shaka Fuswa, who was abducted from a shopping mall whilst he was, uh, you know, uh, with his family. Something that we want to condemn in the strongest terms. We don't expect members of parliament to be treated like common criminals. We will not accept that. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thought this was very, very important uh, to, to, to inform the nation that uh, we, we wish to protest. And we are happy that uh, Madam Speaker has reserved the ruling. Uh, on that particular matter. Uh, we, we, we hope that that ruling will be rendered soon so that the police are directed, the police are instructed, members of parliament are lawmakers. We indeed have other options. We have options like motions which want to bring on the floor of the house until we get that respect that these members of parliament deserve. Without uh, much ado, I would now like to invite uh, Honorable Robert Kalimi just to you know, add a few words to, to <coughs> thank you very much, leader of the opposition, the chief whip, members of parliament, the media house. To me, I'm just getting very, very much worried, members of parliament, because as far as I'm concerned, the separation of power that is executive, uh, parliament, and uh, the judiciary. The power of the speaker is slowly fading out from our hands. It is now getting into the executive. May I remind the nation to say, if anything happened to the president today, or maybe there was some rerun of election, the speaker is supposed to act as a president. To me, the speaker is number two in this country. And if a member of parliament can be arrested without even the consent of the speaker, then I wonder where we are going. I can, I can give you an example. Can a cabinet minister be arrested without the consent of the president? The answer is no. The president is supposed to be aware. We are not asking for any favor that we are above the law. We can't be arrested. No, we can be arrested. I, I'm, I can just give my, myself as an example. Whereby I never even resisted. I was called for something. I was treated, treated like a criminal. I was denied a, a bond. For just fake, 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 fake news, the whole country. I have 700 people in Mungu district. That is a population. Plus... Who are looking for me? 700,000. 700, 700,000. 700, hey, almost a million. People are looking forward for me. Had 76,000 registered voters who are in Maroko stores. And everyone is complaining that this man is a thief, a member of parliament. To me, this is unacceptable. And to me, let the speaker take responsibility. Because I'm told, even the previous speaker, they can't arrest the member of parliament without the consent of the honorable speaker. To me, the, the ruling which the speaker made now, maybe he should have made it, should have reserved that before even Jackie Mwimba stood. And let me remind Honorable Jackie Mwimba, he's not the first Minister of Home Affairs, and he's not the last Minister of Home Affairs. This excitement, as if he's jumping on a kangaroo or each pululu, to just be excited and not even answering properly, his days are numbered. He's not the first minister. We are the ministers, powerful ministers in that office. Yeah, yeah. So he should not... In fact, when the leader of opposition said members of parliament, he never meant PF. Even he said, even you PND, if they want to arrest you PND members of parliament, they should be respected. We are talking about members of parliament, not PF, for God's sake. Are you PNs not members of parliament? They are. They are. But when we say members of parliament, they think that we are talking about PF. Are the PF the only people they are accused of doing these things? What will happen if the same Jackie Mungu is arrested at one time? He can be fired even today, become a backbencher. Would he love to be treated like that? And I want to remind him, I served as a, uh, as a, uh, a foreign service, as a diplomat, for the past eight years. And, and he had a diplomatic passport. He should not come here and educate us. The role of a diplomatic passport, how it is treated. To start with, the diplomatic passport is not given to anyone. Why is he not given to his wife? I'm giving an example. Oh, he's made. 
If the diplomatic passport is something which is easy, let's, let, let's respect these things. It comes with the name and dignity. It doesn't, it takes a lot of things to someone to become a member of parliament. We are not saying people should not arrest us, though. You can arrest me, I'm not above the law. But the question, the manner in which you treat a member of parliament. You can't. A I'm salutable. A law, I'm salutable as a member of parliament. Not where, but even a police officer is talking to a member of parliament, his hand is in pocket, he's putting the, the, the member of parliament, his trousers up. Who does that? Where are we heading? We can't accept this. And we are not going to allow this. And that's the reason why we are here. The, the house has been reduced to nothing. And we are not going to accept it to do this. And I'm urging those members of parliament for PF who are not here. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, honorable members. I will now call upon honorable Christopher Shakafuswa. Also, thank you, leader of opposition, chief whip, and uh, fellow members of parliament. So, you saw today on the floor of the house where we have seen the continued abuse uh, of uh, the police by the Minister of Home Affairs, where on the other hand they are saying that they will respect the rule of law and only go for those that do not have immunity. Allow me to take you back uh, on what happened on the 3rd of May, where we saw overzealous police sent by Honorable Jack Mwimbo and his government to the house of uh, our 60th uh, Republican President, uh, His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, who by the Constitution is dressed by immunity. We saw overzealous officers trying to cut the gates to his house, and some of us who rushed there to say that was wrong. Uh, we have seen uh, Jack Mwimbo and uh, uh, the, the, the UPND government sending overzealous police officers on us so that they can silence us. I want to say this, that some of us hate injustice and will continue to speak against injustice. What happened today on the, on the floor of the House where my colleague, Honorable Munia Zulu, uh, wanted the Speaker to rule that members of Parliament should be respected. At least they must be accorded some dignity when being called to the police station. We saw the minister come and lie on the floor of the house. Some of us will not allow that. We will defend this country. We are going to defend the democracy of our nation. And the continued abuse of the police by the new dawn government is something we are going to challenge going forward. I was put in cells with 125 criminals at Lusaka Central Prison. I mean, Lusaka Central cells. There, we had hardcore criminals. Against the directive of the president that uh, people should be arrested the second day taken to court, we have people who've stayed there over six months. Somebody is arrested, very petty charge, and they don't see you know, the, the, the day in court. We have people at Kabwata Police Station, leader of opposition. I'm aware that there, uh, there are some, um, a, a wing of uh, police that beat up a suspect, and that suspect died Chilenji. the following day at Chilenji. They brought them at Kabwata, charged the, the, the inmates who were in that cell with murder, yes. just to cover up the abuse by the police. And, they were so and these boys are still inserted yes. at Kabwata police station without being taken to court. From now onwards, we are going to take upon the, the police. We are going to make sure that the police excesses are challenged. We are going to challenge uh, lies that are going to be told on the house, on the floor of the house. That house is a house of laws. It's governed by standing orders. Our standing order 65 does not allow that a minister tells lies. I was abducted on the 25th of May by a plain clothes policeman at Novera Mall. We had a minister of home affairs telling lies that they gave us call outs and we, we never uh, 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 obliged to the call out. I was not given a call out myself, but instead I was treated like a common criminal. We're not asking for so much. We're elected members of parliament. All of us seated here 
are honorable members. The constitution gives us that status. But to silence us, the, the UPND government wants to use the police. We will challenge this going forward. We are going to challenge this. Zambia is our country and will not allow anyone to abuse the powers that are given to them by our constitution. The same constitution uh, recognizes the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. And so, all we are asking is, can we also be respected? I thank you so much. Yes, just a minute. So, over, over, over what Siwane Boshakafusu has said, when I was put in cells at Kabwata, I found those boys. Yes. Apparently, they were at Chilenje police station, where the, the, the police beat a captain for Zafu. Grabbed their phones, his phones. NRC, have you ever seen a criminal goes with a phone in the cells? The answer is no. Every time when you reach by the septum, they say, Chosa Sapato, Chosa Belt. They beat this guy, grab his money, and now they instructed those boys to say, beat him up. Then the boys refused. The boys told him the story. They refused. Because the guy went dead. They killed the boys. And those police officers today, they're walking scot free in the street, drinking even champagne. When that is half man who has a family is a dead person, we are calling upon the police. And one boy has stayed there 100 days. The boy has spent 100 days. The boys have refused to say, even if you take us even to for, for 20 years, one day we are going to leave. Because we never killed that captain. A Zaf captain being killed. So we are calling. These are issues which Jackie Mumba will investigate. Not this pettiness thing is doing. What is the excitement, uh, excite, uh, excitement coming from? This is unacceptable. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, before I call upon uh, Honorable Munia Zulu as our last speaker, I want to say that um, uh, it's, it's clear, uh, getting the testimonies from our colleagues who are in police cells, that uh, under the UPND government, uh, there is a continued violation of human rights. Uh, suspects are being tortured. This is a constitutional democracy. The rule of law must reign suspects have rights so we are going to raise a number of issues in the interest of suspects now that we know that there are a number of brothers and sisters still incarcerated who are being tortured every other day and some of that torture has resulted in loss of life it's very very unfortunate that this is happening under the new dawn government a government of angels that promised to govern this country using the rule of law what we are seeing is the exact opposite it's not the first report that we are getting of torture. I'm sure you remember there were some uh, the, the teenagers who were tortured uh, by the army not very long ago. We wish to join others in condemning uh, the torture of suspects in uh, police cells, as we also condemn these continued arbitrary arrests. Honorable members, I want to make this appeal. I want to call upon each and every member of parliament to put on their armor and fight for the restoration of the rule of law in this country. Let us all stand up and fight for the rule of law. Uh, if we don't, we are the only representatives that the 19 million Zambians are relying upon to restore the rule of law. So members of parliament, this is a call uh, to all of you to stand up courageously and fight for the restoration of the rule of law in this country. May I take this opportunity to invite Honorable Munia Zulu uh, to, 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 to add a few comments to this. Um, thank you very much, uh, Leader of Opposition. My message, first of all, is very simple and basic. I'm one of the victims of the police abductions. What Honorable Jack Mwimbu told the House today was a lie. And uh, in his line, I've come to one confirmation. Just like they detained uh, Chris Zumani Zimba at Woodlands Police, speaking on behalf of the people of Eastern Province, I must state that this is nothing to do with our status as members of parliament. What is happening, as a matter of fact, is ethnic cleansing. Yes. This is ethnic cleansing. Yes. Let's not be diplomat uh, diplomatic about it. His responses there were saying, no, what happened previously the owner Bonkombo was arrested, they are here to revenge of whatever happened. We were not in parliament then. But what is happening is ethnic cleansing. And we are saying not to it. If we don't speak to these issues and pretend that 
there is no ethnic cleansing taking place and we're doing a disservice to the Zambian people. Honorable Jack Mwimbu must be put in order and be told that this is one Zambia, one nation. Yes, they enjoy the temporal authority of having state power because they're from the south, but I think it's not enough reason for them to be sending same officers from the southern region to be abducting members. I think this must come to an end. I needed to put this on record. It's not about our status as members of parliament. How possible is it that the only criminals or only suspects are people that are from the north and the east? Are you telling the Zambian people that there's no criminal in southern province? There is no criminal in western province? There is no suspect in northwestern province or suspects are Nyanja and Bemba speaking? And I think we cannot pretend that when you speak to these issues, the New Aleppo has been tribal. We've got to speak to this matter. We can no longer pretend and say, no, the Kusemi are a tribalist. They're so sensitive to this matter because they practice it, they eat it, and they enjoy it. So we are victims of ethnicism that is taking place. I think this matter needs to be put to rest. I, even in the house, people say, no, we're one people. Which one people? How do you raise a point of order on a point of order? If I raise a point of order on a point of order, the presiding of, of officer will say, no, you can't raise a matter on a point of order. But if people on the left, on the right, raise a point of order on a point of order, a ruling is delivered. Where is the uh, consistency? So the ethnic cleansing taking place is something that we should speak to it. If we pretend we will have a situation of what happened in other jurisdictions, we must protect this country. And if at all, they want to play that game. We will play it better. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable members. I think one other important point that was made was that uh, when you look at all these arrests against MPs and other people, they are being conducted by the same people. It's the same crack squad of police officers. This is the police service. Why is it that it's only those names Whenever there's been an arrest, it doesn't matter whether it's Ronald Chitotela from Kawambo, it's the same names. So this is the reason why uh, we are not wrong to say they've got specific instructions to harass members of uh, the PF, to harass members of parliament. Because if it was ordinary functions of the police, we would have had other police officers uh, carrying on uh, that particular function. It's the same group of police officers. So we are calling upon the Zambian people to resist this continued harassment. Like I said earlier, put on your armor, stand up and fight for the restoration of the rule of law. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.